Welcome to the Dog Nerd Show, where we geek out over our best friends. I'm Megan. And I'm Michael, and this is a show about all things dog. Today we're going to talk about what kills approximately 1.2 million dogs a year in the United States. Yeah, if you could save your dog from serious injury and death, you'd do it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So before we get started, though, uh, and when we jump into it, I just want to ask you, if you like this content, if you like what we're doing, give us a thumbs up. Think about subscribing. Click the notification bell. It uh, lets you know when we have these videos pop up every two weeks. Yeah, and we love your comments. So be sure to give us your feedback and stay tuned to hear who our featured commenter is today. <laughs> All right. Okay, Megan. So what kills two point or 1.2 million dogs? What kills 1.2 million dogs a year? Cars. Are dogs driving the car? <laughs> no, it's not like Toonsis, the driving cat. Um, <laughs> that's aging me just a little bit. Um, no, it's cars. Dogs getting hit by cars. And when you brought this up to me, I, I wanted to look up what the st statistic was. Because, um, you know, my family growing up, we had three Yorkies. And all three of them got out of the house or got loose. And um, all three were hit and killed by cars, which was tragic. All the way around, and yeah. So it's a pet peeve of mine. It um, uh, when whenever I'm out driving around, and I see a dog crossing the road, or I see it loose, and uh, I, I just I'm like I cringe. It's it's cringeworthy yeah. to say the least because the dog doesn't understand and traffic yeah. and what's out there, and so we're gonna go into. How you can keep your dog safe from this happening. And the first thing, which I know we both are <laughs> adamant about, is have your dog on a leash. It's really that simple. I mean, not we'll go into other stuff, but <laughs> the number one thing is leash your dog. Yeah, le leash your dog. If you go on a walk with the dog, if, if you're in the yard and you, you don't know, have you, a fence, you don't have a fence and you, you know, you want the dog out there with you while you're washing your car or whatever, you know put them on a leash or confine them somewhere, you know? Yeah. So that, that would be the next one, which is have a fenced yard and inspect it often. Yeah. So just because you have a fenced yard, uh, you know, dogs like to dig, other animals like to dig. There could be a tear in the fence. There could be a broken board. If it's a wood fence, inspect your fence. Um, also, if you have a large, you know, lab style dog, a little two foot high fence is, is Even not going to work. Even a four foot high fence is yeah. not going to work. Like yeah. those pretty iron fences that are like four feet tall. Yeah. So you need to you need to make sure, especially if your dog is excitable and likes to climb. Yeah. Can so, jump. So inspect that fence. It's very important. Yeah, and also get locks for your gates. So we actually had two instances where our gates were opened. We didn't leave our gates open, and we don't have yard people or pest people, but our gates were open, and our dogs got out, and thankfully, we were out there with them and noticed it happened. So, check your gates. Yeah. Uh, get locks for your gates is really what you should do. Yeah. What that does is that, so if you have, you know, the pest inspector or you have a yard person over there, that, that forces you to kind of check that gate when they leave. Because, uh, you know, they, they may just leave the gate open or cracked or... Mm -hmm. if, you know, if it's kind of warped, it may not latch all the way, then wind blows and, yeah. and your gate's open. So, um, so, yeah, check your gates after people visit. And then something that we've done because... So, we have border terriers. For those that listen to the show often, you know this. Terriers have a very high prey drive. So most border terrier people will tell you never let your dog off of a leash. Um, unless even if it's really well-trained, the only dogs I know that are well-trained enough to be off of a leash are probably like police and military dogs. Mm -hmm. But I know that terriers that have a strong hunting instinct 
cannot be trusted off leash because nope. they will bolt at the sight of anything. So in saying that, secure your home. So we actually have baby gates so that the dogs yep. cannot actually get to the front door. And then we never go in and out the garage area. So we're keeping our dogs safe that way. That's how two out of the three Yorkies growing up with got out was they got out the, the, the door that goes into the garage because we just weren't quick enough. Right. So, um, so think about how you, you want to set up your home. And we actually have building plans for our dream home that includes like a vestibule. So where the front door opens up to a hallway and then there's another door that goes into the house. Cause then that makes it so easy. Yeah. Because, uh, baby gates are, are a needed, uh, necessary thing in our house currently i don't like them i hate baby gates i've uh, fallen over them yeah. i've traumatized riley by falling over them and so our dogs are small you know for a big dog a baby gate she's not gonna you know really do much so yeah that that that'll bring us to the next one which i'll let you cover yeah so this was probably the hardest one to do and it may or may not work for every dog but if you train your dog not to go out uh, the front door or any door without you with them or there. Um, that's probably a tough one to do. That's going to take the most work, but, but it's doable. It's doable. In fact, I was just thinking back, uh, years ago, I won a contest on Twitter where Victoria Stillwell came to the house and worked on me with training the dogs. And Michael had to work that day. And I sent him a picture of the front door wide open with Finley sitting down looking out the front door he didn't even have a leash on or anything and she had helped us train to keep him to stay now we would never just like test him on that because mm -hmm. i was like okay we got through that we're done that was a fluke yeah, thing yeah what, because what, what didn't happen was a squirrel didn't yeah, I was run say, by or a dog let, let a squirrel a dog a cat uh, a bird fly by in that whole pit uh picture that you sent me would be you guys chasing after him yeah. as he took yeah. off so, so it it's some dog breeds like we just said a while ago is you know if you have a terrier they're very prey driven and very independent thinkers yeah so i i would i would be leery of that and make sure that you have safeguards in place if you're going to try that training yes absolutely i was so nervous doing that training <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to think about it um, so other issues that you could have with loose dogs, um, probably the big one is people, kids can get injured. So, yeah. you know, a big dog can knock over a small child. So that's very dangerous. And um, hopefully we're not looking at like biting or, you know, any aggression issues, but then there's that. If you have an aggressive dog, you should yeah. never, ever, ever have them off of a leash and you should really take all of these things to heart. Um, but it can put people at risk in, in several ways. It could also put your dog at risk. So if your dog hurts a human, that dog could be potentially euthanized, depending on the laws in your area. Yep. Um, you can get sued. And how many of you out there are like me that when you see a dog that's loose, you stop and try to help it? Well, mm -hmm. that can put a person at risk because Sometimes when you're trying to help catch a scared dog, you don't make the best decisions. You're not paying you're attention. And if you're on uh, a busy highway mm -hmm. or, or you know, around a curve or something and it's somebody comes around out. that curve, yep. man, you're putting yourself at risk. And, you know, going back to, you know, the kids getting injured or a person getting injured, you're putting yourself at risk there as the, as the parent of that dog for possible legal problems. So... Yeah. You know, it's it's in your best interest as well as the dogs uh, to to confine that dog uh, for everybody's benefit. Yeah, and then another thing to consider is if your dog gets loose, it doesn't mean that there couldn't be an instance like where there's a dog attack. So if your mm -hmm. dog runs up to another dog that's on its leash, being walked by its owner, and your dog is friendly, but that dog is not. There could be a dog fight and that could be horrible for everybody involved. Right. So that's just not something that you want to even deal with. Nope. Yeah. And, and, you know, that being said, you know, we want to make sure that, that your dog is safe and 
you know, if they're running around and say you're in a suburban area or an ex-urban area, which is a, a new term, uh, just on the fringes of a metro area, and there's and there is, um, you know, woods or wildlife or nature, your your dog's at risk of stumbling up on a coyote or a snake or or work or or the flip side of that your dog could attack a baby deer or you know which you know, happened in our neighborhood yeah and which and, like like neighbors witnessed and had to call the police because this particular neighbor lets their dogs loose in a wooded area and it's illegal <laughs> probably everywhere but I know in our state to kill a baby deer and uh and if you're watching this show you're probably a dog lover and you probably get it, but there's people out there that are. It's, there's a phobia. They 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 are extremely Terrified. afraid of, of dogs. Yeah, and it's not fair for us to be like, oh well, you shouldn't be afraid of my dog or what. They have a a psychological thing that is real to them. Yeah, maybe they've been attacked before. Yeah. You know, it's they so, could have their own PTSD or they just grew up being afraid of dogs and never were around them. Right. So that's really stressful to people, but yeah, exactly. All right. So this is not really leash etiquette so much. So as it's containment, but I know a lot of y'all love an electric fence because you think you can just map out your yard and your dog will have free range all around that yard. And it will look like a picture perfect Norman Rockwell painting. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? I actually know people personally who had electric fences and they're, this is somebody I knew that had a lab that was smart enough to realize once I get shocked, I'm in the clear, yeah. then I can go visit my buddy down the street. So that friend was always getting a call from the neighbor saying, Hey, your dog is here again. And that's just, that's just not cool. Another thing about an electric fence is it doesn't stop you know, coyotes from getting into your, your yard correct? or, you know, what have you. Uh, here's the thing too about fences is that maybe I'm a neurotic dog mom, which may not, maybe, I mean, definitely we know I am, but, um, if you're not out with your dog, you don't know what your dog's getting into or getting up to or what's around. So we've talked about toxic mushrooms we've talked about, um, like snake bites and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. There's, there are things that can hurt your animal, even if your animal is just out there, you know, having a good time sunbathing. So, so I am not a fan of an electric fence. Yeah. So electric fence is a personal choice of yours. We're yeah. not, I'm not saying do or don't get one. It's, uh, I guess versus nothing. It's better. Uh, but do your research on those. Um, there's a lot of legitimate companies out there that can help you with those. But at, as, as a, as a dog nerd person, I'm not a big fan of them either. I think that there's uh, a false sense of security with them. Yeah. And, uh, depending on your dog for sure. Yeah. And who wants to shock their dog? Mm -mm, not me. Okay. No. We'll move on. How do you feel about flexi leashes? Hate them. <laughs> hate, hate, hate them to death. Hated it. Yeah. Hated it. Except for we, ha I will say we, ha we have a occasion to use, a flexi leash if we're going on a hike where we want to give Riley a good bit of lead or in a big field. Yeah. But it's still, I'm not so a, hard I'm, to, con they're yeah, hard I don't to even, control. I don't even like, I don't even like doing that. I, I think we just need to get, this is a personal thing. Me and Megan, we need to get a longer lead yeah, okay. for that. That's I, a great I don't idea. like, I don't like flexi leash. Well, think about it. Okay. Let's just say you have a Rottweiler, right? That's, that's your dog of choice. And you're going to go to the park and you've got, um, a flexi leash you are putting a 180 pound dog on a little th thin string that is being controlled by the distance by a plastic gear inside a plastic handle good luck with that oh and if that fails and you go to grab that that lead <laughs> well you're gonna have some third degree burns and cut your fingers off so yeah. i'm not a big fan of them i don't think they're great but one of the things that they do is they allow people who have incredible dogs and they don't mean anything by it, but they allow that to, to let their dog get the lead like Megan was talking about. But then here comes somebody else, the other side. And that somebody else is me and Riley. <laughs> and, and Riley is, uh, because she's been attacked 
she's kind of she's she's leery. She doesn't want anyone yeah. getting her in her grill. And and oh, well, my dog's friendly. Let him come up. Your dog's about to probably get nipped on the nose. Well, well, she's never bitten, but you're you're usually when that happens, the person has already let their dog start running up to your dog before they've even asked you if your dog is friendly. And so that's where it gets really dangerous because um, like Riley has ne- even when she was attacked by the Huskies, she did not bite. Yeah, she I, barked back. She was like, you better stand down because you were in my face and I don't like it. Yeah. So she, she, I was so impressed with the way she stood her ground, but uh, you know, these were Huskies that were loose. Um, but with the flexi leash, yeah, people do tend to be like, oh, my dog is friendly. And you're like, my dog is stressed out. Please get yeah. like, reel it in. And it is harder to reel it in. It's harder to control. I think you're right. We should get a really, really long lead for yep. those walks. Okay. Put that on our list. Today. Yeah, it should. Yeah, it, it's just. Oh, and that kind of, that was our third, our, our, la- our final thing, which was don't let your dog run up on another dog. Etiquette. It's so rude, you guys. I mean, you need you need etiquette when you're doing this. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I know you're out. It's fun. It's it's a beautiful. Your, do- your dog is the sunny, happiest. Sunny Sunday afternoon, the and you're like, flying. Yeah, the birds oh, look, are chirping. Look, there's another dog. Let's. How cute will it be when to have our dogs meet each other? And then, then it's. I'll, I can do the look. So the look from the person that has the happy, friendly dog is like. When, once it gets close to your dog and that dog starts freaking out, it's like, oh, oh. What oh, is wrong with your dog? Wow. Why is your dog yeah. so crazy? And it's like, well, it's it's not my dog. It's your etiquette. You you need to have leash etiquette and be like, hey, is can my dog meet your dog? Yeah. Is your dog friendly? There you go. Yeah. That's all you, you That's just all need you to ask do. that. Yeah. Because you want, you want your dog to socialize. And if you have a happy-go-lucky dog, that's awesome. But you don't know what the background is for that other dog that you're encountering. And let me just tell you this. If the, if the person that is approaching with the dog is kind of looking and walking slowly and starts walking to the other side of the street, that's not <laughs> that's, a friendly dog. <laughs> yeah. That's a dog that's got some issues. So just leave them be. Not everyone. You know, it's like when we meet new people, yeah, some like... I, I'm a hugger, but I mean, I wouldn't hug a stranger, but you know, like if someone think about it, if someone came up to you when they met you and they were all in your face, like, Hey, how are you? No, 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 no. You, mm. we've, we've all got our bubble, right? Yeah. Our bubble, boundaries, our comfort people. bubble. Boundaries. So dogs have that too. So don't, don't, don't disturb another dog's comfort bubble. And I will, I want to, I want to say one more thing. If you are if you are a parent that has a child, please teach your child not to run up on dogs. Yes. It it, it, it whether they're on a leash or off a leash, don't do that. Yeah, etiquette for everyone involved, right? All the way around. So I think that pretty much covers our leash etiquette, loose dog etiquette. Um I do want to, I love y'all's comments. Thank you so much. We've gotten some really good comments on the Irish Wolfhound video. Lots of IW fans out there. Look at me using the lingo. (laughs) Um, So today, our or this week's commenter of the week is Erica C. She has commented on several of our videos. Um, This one was on how to prepare for losing your pet. And this is so sweet. She says, I cried for you both knowing the pain and sadness you're feeling. As always, you've given us some great tips. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, thank Erica. you. Thank you, Erica. Yeah, and then just a, a mini shout out to Rhonda Hofer. Um, she said it was our best show yet, the the grief one. Yeah, and it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet. It was a hard one, but it's important information. So thank you so much for tuning in, you guys, um, all you podcast listeners. Thanks for the reviews. Um, we love y'all too. We know this is, you know, formatted like for the video, but... Every day in my morning gratitudes, I thank our listeners, our viewers, our subscribers. Y'all are awesome. So thank you so much. You can find us everywhere online at Dog Nerd Show, dognerdshow.com. And then if you want to be on the show, drop us a line, dognerdshow at gmail.com. Until next time, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.